Russia and Iran released a joint statement regarding U.S. intervention in Syria. Iran and Russia said, U.S. crossed the red line. From now on, we will respond with force to any aggressor or any breach of red lines. Putin and Rouhani called for an impartial investigation into the chemical attack in the Idlib city of Syria. Following the bombings of two Egyptian Coptic churches in Alexandria and Tanta, which killed 43 people and injured 119, Egypt declared a three-month state of emergency. Egyptian President Sisi said the war against Johannes would be long and painful. Both attacks were carried out one week before Coptic Easter and with Pope Francis scheduled to visit Egypt later this month. The controversy surrounding Bylock application, which the Turkish intelligence agency MIT has used as a criterion for imprisoning tens of thousands of people and dismissing people from their profession, continues. The Turkish intelligence announced that last week, Bylock data was shared with judicial authorities starting on May 2016. However, sources in Ankara prosecutor's office stated, Bylock records were not sent to us from the Turkish intelligence at the time. We learned about the app after July 15. During a joint live program on 24 TV and 360 TV, Turkey's Erdogan gave a striking response to a question about a photograph of him with his grandchild reading the Quran. Erdogan said that the photograph was taken in Marmaris on July 15. His response sparked debates about the controlled coup claim again. Because Erdogan, who learned about the coup either at afternoon or evening from his brother-in-law, gave this pose with his grandson at night with the comfort of knowing everything is under control. The question marks related to the details in the photo are rattling social media. The question of whether Erdogan moved his library to the hotel he was staying at strengthened suspicions that he was staying at a house rather than a hotel. A protest march was held to demand the release of arrested journalists in the well-known Istiklal Street of Taksim, Istanbul. A group of 200 people met at the tunnel and took 100 steps for journalist Ahmed Shuk, who has been under detention for 100 days. The manifesto signed by free journalists stated, Without separating one from the other, we want freedom for all the arrested journalists who were prisoned for doing journalism. According to The Guardian, during a meeting with a senior diplomat, Trump's deputy assistant Sebastian Gorka suggested a plan to partition Libya based on the old Ottoman provinces with a map he drew on a napkin. Gorka is known for his hardline policies aimed at defeating radical Islam. Conflicts which escalated following the US-backed intervention overthrowing Gaddafi in 2011 are still ongoing. Turkey's presidential chief advisor Shukru Karatepe, who is on the Constitutional Amendment Works team, said that with the presidential system, large cities will be restructured. He also gave China as an example. His statement led to comments about the government planning a state system if the presidential system is approved. During his visit to the local shopkeepers in the Bafra district of Samsun, Turkey's opposition nationalist movement party dissident politician Sinan Oğan's guards tried to catch a person claimed to be carrying a gun on his waist among the crowd. Police launched investigation on the notice that the person had escaped the guards. While referendum voting abroad has ended, only doubts are left. Despite being illegal, a mentally disabled person was forced to vote in Frankfurt, disturbing the conscience of the witnesses.